and welcome to Snapdragon Behind the Silicon Series 2. I'm Lucy Hedges and for the first episode of the series, I'll be joined by some new Snapdragon insiders and Qualcomm experts right here in gorgeous Chamonix, France. And if you're wondering whether the snow-capped mountains are a clue as to what this episode is all about, you'll be right as we'll be learning all about the thermal efficiencies of the Snapdragon X series and how its cutting-edge technology maintains peak performance while staying cool under pressure. With us today are Kevin, a tech enthusiast and content creator from Munich, Germany, and Julian, a content creator and keen smartphone photographer from right here in France. Hey guys, how's it going? Fine. Yeah. I mean, there are worse places to be for work, right? Yeah. I've got one question for you. Are you ready for this super exciting journey that we're about to go on to uncover the secrets behind Snapdragon's thermal leadership? Yes, definitely excited. And I really want to know how Snapdragon puts all this power into their chips and keep them cool at the same time. Yeah. For sure, I'm really excited uh, for this journey. I really want to see the science behind the thermal uh, computer and uh, how to make it uh, more efficient. All right, let's go and chat to some experts down in the valley. Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> Joining us now, it's Marika Knox, a senior manager supporting Snapdragon Compute. This lady knows her tech. So I know you guys are into photo editing and video editing. We have a benchmark that represents those types of workloads very well. So those are the type of sustained, high power, high performance workloads that you see when you're doing your types of tasks. Let me start the benchmark. So it's Cinebench image rendering. Mm -hmm. And you will see this PC is going to render the image slower and this will perform those tasks much faster. And what's also important is that those thermals, like it will keep it cool. So you can already see the progress, right? The performance, how quickly Snapdragon X Elite is rendering. It actually translates to a performance in a lot of different use cases. And you can see here, this is already halfway through the first image, yeah. whilst X86 is, well, a little further. Trailing yeah. behind. You guys are working a lot on yeah. your laptops. On train. Walking on, yeah. on, on train. train. Exactly, yeah. on a plane. Anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. So you want to have great performance also yes. when you unplug. You don't want that performance to drop. And that is the trade-off that usually happens on x86. Either you have good battery life or you have good performance. Yes. On Snapdragon, you have both. Yeah, like I can really see on the Snapdragon X Elite, it has rendered a lot more frames already compared to the other device. So it's really exactly. impressive. Yeah. 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 This is just one use case, but it actually translates very well to a mm. lot of different things you're doing on your PC because you are multitasking. You are using your PC not only with one application, but with a lot of them, even when you're doing video creation yeah. or image creation. This is one of the ways to measure performance and how this translates to user experience. So look at that, the, the tests are finished, they are complete. And if you look at the scores, Snapdragon X Elite is close to two times more performant on those types of intense multi-threaded workloads. What happens when a computer is undertaking you know, a really intensive task or something time consuming and lengthy and why might it get warmer? So when you're using your computer to do a lot of heavy tasks, what happens is as if you were going on a run, having your heart rate elevated for a long, long, long time, your body warms up. You're running, your heart rate is super elevated. You need to slow down or else you will get a, a heart yeah. attack, right? So yeah. that is like a defense yeah. mechanism. A PC has exactly the same mechanism. It's called thermal throttling. Mm -hmm. And this is when you go to a certain level of performance and you actually have to drop it to not damage the PC, to not damage the CPU. We engineer it so that the user experience is best in class and mm -hmm. the PC is still cool and quiet. One of the exciting things about the Snapdragon X series is this shift to an MPU accelerated workflow. You know, how does this affect the heat dissipation across the chip? One of the great things about introducing Qualcomm Hexagon NPU mm -hmm. is that you have specialized worker responsible for AI tasks. Yeah. When you introduce yeah. specialists, yeah. they can do something more performant and at a lower energy cost. And are there certain thermal hotspots between the CPU and NPU? And how do you manage that? We can have targeted cooling mm -hmm. depending on where the workload is. Yes. And we can do it very effectively thanks to the fact that we know where a 
certain workload is currently being executed and cool that particular spot. So we're going to have a bit of fun now by running an unofficial thermals test. Now, obviously, we are not in a scientifically controlled lab, <laughs> but that doesn't matter because the one thing Chamonix does give us is plenty of the white stuff, plenty of snow. We've got two piles of it right here, which you probably wouldn't find in many labs, right? <laughs> what we've got is an x86 architecture-based laptop and a Snapdragon X Elite laptop, both of which with similar size, weight, and they're recently launched as well. So what we're going to do is put them to task running Procyon AI and find out which pile of snow melts under the heat and which laptop keeps it's cool. Start the test? Yeah. All let's right. Go. Hit run. There we go. And we're up and running. So it's been a little while, so now's the right time to check in. And I mean, you can already see what's happening. You know, the Snapdragon X Elite laptop is really holding up, and the ice is still quite chunky. Whereas on the competitor, you know, it's melting, yeah. melting under the pressure. But, you know, I want to see this with something a bit more official than our eyeballs. So I've got a thermal camera here. This one is more odd. Yeah, look at that trackpad. Yeah. Okay, let's look at this. Uh, and this one. Me. It's only yeah. slightly red. Yeah. Is the other one? Uh, yellow, yeah. So you can see a lot more cool areas. Yeah. The Snapdragon X Elite laptop is clearly the one keeping its cool. cool. So we placed two laptops on blocks of snow to see which device would melt the snow faster. And the Snapdragon device stayed a lot cooler, so the ice didn't melt as fast as the competing device. It's really interesting to see with the thermal camera because we see a difference on the Snapdragon X Elite. Uh, on the trackpad, is more cooler than the competitor. Joining us now, it's Ryan Shrout, president of Signal 65, and a company that I think is best described as a leader in third-party technology testing. We've just been learning all about thermal management and the efficiencies of Snapdragon, and we actually ran our own unofficial uh, thermal test involving mounds of snow. Um, but we've been told that your team have been running some rather exciting and, more importantly, official tests. So can you tell us a bit about that? We'll use uh, an infrared camera in kind of a, a controlled environment, and it doesn't look look at visible light, it looks at infrared light and helps paint a picture of what the hot spots are, what the cool spots are, give you the peak temperatures and some of the average temperatures. That's what we can use to look at, hey, how does this laptop perform or how does any device perform across a, a workload or scenario? The first set of tests is three identical laptops from the same manufacturer, basically physically identical systems with the same batteries and, and cooling solutions. The only thing that's really changing inside is the processor. The X Elite versus one of the competitors shows a 10% performance advantage in a heavy multi-threaded workload like a blender rendering application. But it's also nine degrees Celsius cooler on the bottom of the laptop. That's a significant difference. But then also if you compare it to the other competing machine in the same chassis, the temperatures might be roughly on par for how the thermals on that design work, but the Snapdragon machine is 90% faster in the workload. We actually pulled out a thermal camera for our unofficial test and <laughs> the results are quite eye opening. Yeah. Yeah. weren't they? You know, it was obvious which laptop was heating or overheating more. They're really fun to look at, right? And you can learn a lot about what's happening underneath the chassis. You can clearly see where the processors are, where the memory is. You look at the front of a display, you can see some interesting characteristics about how, how thermal properties and heat properties are, are affected by these devices. Why is it so important that these tests are run? CP performance and benchmarks and graphics and gaming and sound quality, all those are incredibly important. But when I am using a laptop on a plane or I'm traveling for long periods of time, you know, power efficiency for battery life, power efficiency for thermals, and how that affects, you know, does your laptop sound like a jet engine when you're using it uh, to get <laughs> yeah. some actual work done? These are all important things. You go into a, to a local retailer or an online store and kind of look at specs and speeds and feeds that aren't immediately apparent. And that's one of the things that we focus on at Signal 65 to make sure that everybody has as much information as possible. Yeah, what I saw is definitely that the Snapdragon device was cooler, especially around the trackpad area compared to the competing device. And Ryan, is this similar to some of the results that your tests have picked up on? One of the areas we look at is definitely the, the thermals and temperatures on the keyboard and trackpad area because it's kind of it's where you set your wrist. That's where you're engaged and kind of physically interacting with the device. Generally speaking, the heat and the thermals and the air and the vents are all in the bottom. So that's where we see the biggest differences. We love doing it. We haven't implemented any snow melting uh, test into our methodology yet. It seems a little messy for us, but uh, it seems like it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for sharing those results with us and just what you guys do. It's super impressive and keep up the good work.
So I've always been a fan of Snapdragon products, um, but this experience has really helped me appreciate all the work and engineering that goes into the products to help me have a great user experience. When Marika made the test, uh, we saw uh, how fast is the Snapdragon Analytics, and uh, for the render of the of the picture, say it's more battery. Uh, for this or more time for walking because it's two times faster than the competitor. The improved thermal performance in the Snapdragon Elite processors can definitely help me in my workflow with video editing and photo editing. It's just a lot more fun if I can get my work done without having to wait for my device to keep up with me. Um, I think this is going to help me a, a lot in my daily job. <music> And that is a wrap for this episode. I do hope that you found our discussions as informative and as impactful as I did while taking in the beauty of Chamonix and the sheer genius of Snapdragon. So make sure you stay tuned for our next episode in London and Belfast, where we'll be talking all things Snapdragon sound and more. The Behind the Silicon series has been shot on Snapdragon. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications.